Why, hello, hello. It's Robbie from Southern California, and it is mid-November already. I don't even know where the whole year went, let alone this month already. Anyways, this is the mid-November garden tour, and let's see what's going on. Not to me too much change, but then everybody else tells me they see all the changes. Here is the chair. I've got the beets starting to grow. We have been pulling beets off and on. This is the beets that I planted in the chair. And of course, this is where I can compost in this container and then just drop this back. And this is a cutting from my tree collar, doing really good. And of course, celery that grew. The tomatoes are still growing. As you can see, we don't have as many, but I did eat a bunch yesterday and so did Gary. And the squash, that's a hybrid zucchini. I've talked about that a lot. If I keep any of the zucchini seeds and grow them, they're growing basically in the hybrids, but they taste really good, so it doesn't matter. I've got a friendly squirrel that's been coming in and eating the leaves, but I'm not going to blame him completely because our weather is changing and I'm seeing a lot of plants starting to struggle. This is my cucumber. I don't think it's going to make it. I do have one little cucumber there, but here is the issue. Today we're cold. Right now, we're probably 60 degrees. They don't know if it's gonna get warmer. At night, it's been getting down to about 50. Oh, and that's also squash in there, but I don't know if it's gonna do anything. Tomorrow, it's supposed to hit the next two days close to 100 in the 90s. Record-breaking, they say. Then Monday, it's gonna go back and drop again, and then they said we're gonna have rain Tuesday or Wednesday. So the weather's been going up and down and up and down. And not only do I not like it, I don't think the plants like it. But you know, whatever happens, happens. That's all about gardening. You know, you take what mother get, you know, gives you, mother nature gives you, and that's fine. Here's a chair, and this is all the onions. Oh, I don't think I put that video up yet. I just planted that, and it's doing great. I'm gonna talk about onions real quick. I'll touch on this. These are what's called onion starts all the way around. I'm gonna have the full video up where if you get starts, I have found out the best way to do it is trim them. These are the little bulbs, the sets, and they actually come up quite quickly. The moment they touch that soil, it seems like they are ready to grow. Walking through here, you can see the squash is still growing and I am still picking squash. So, so far, so good on the squash. That's green sorrel. I've got mint around here. Let me turn around. That's a sad looking dinosaur kale. Again, I've got a squirrel that's been coming up and down and I think he's chewing a lot of the leaves. Probably can't find a lot of food. So he's picked on that and that's okay. We have so much. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I didn't even tool it. In fact, I opened this up yesterday and Gary told me, you know, there's a squirrel sitting in your squash. He didn't do anything. So I threw the tool back and he hasn't come back. They remember, they don't like tool. This is the tool, T-U-L-L-E, because they get their nails caught in here and they think it's a trap. So when they think it's a trap, they jump back and they leave. And all you have to do is drape it around the plants. It works good. You can drape it like, if I would have draped it on top of the dinosaur kale there, it would look beautiful. Just drape it on there. Remember, you don't need the bees to pollinate that, so it's no big deal, it's not seeding. So I should have done it. Oh, look, I have beautiful tomatoes back here. Oh, this one's full of tomatoes. There's tomatoes there. There's more tomatoes there, look at that. Okay, so this one likes the odd weather of getting cold, hot, cold, hot. And then the other plants aren't so thrilled. So that's the thing is that each plant is gonna react differently and these are volunteers, so you never know what they're going to do. So we'll see what happens. And then of course, potatoes. Yes, I wanna start growing potatoes. These are the potatoes that I grew in my yard. They came up in my compost bins. In my, not my compo I don't have bins, in my compost containers. And there were teeny little potatoes. So I pulled them all, let them sit on the counter, and now I planted them. And look how big they're getting. I plan on doing a lot more root vegetables. That's one thing I don't do a lot of. And it's shame on me because they're so cheap in the store, I really don't mess with them. The greens are so expensive. You know, a little bundle of organic greens can cost you $4, $5. Potatoes you can get for a dollar for five pounds. So I haven't, but I do want to. I want to get more potatoes. We've got our potato mint growing. So, and that's another plant. So I do want to concentrate more on root vegetables. So I'll be doing a little bit of those changes. 
Again, these are onion starts. They were already big plants. And I'll get into detail on another video on how is the best way I found out for me to grow it. But those are doing great. And that's just an orange tree that grew in my kitchen window. I'll see what I'm going to decide. Walking onion, celery, this still went to seed. Let's back up. So all in all, the front yard's doing good. Gary told me I got a tree growing in there. I thought it was a flower. It had flowers growing, and then that thing came up. And he said, he got all excited. You know what tree that is? And I don't remember. He knew, so he's thinking of moving it, but he said they get so massive. I don't even know where it came from. We do not have the tree on our property, so either a bird came along after eating seeds and pooped in there or something. Probably that's what happened. Oh well, that's how things grow. Of course, my fig is still here, which is going to my daughter. She wants it. Gary said he'd rather wait till it starts to drop its leaves, which obviously it's going to do soon, and then he will deliver it over there, and then she can plant it or they can plant it whatever way they want. And of course the squash, some's gonna make it and some is not. And then red vein sorrow, and there's a volunteer tomato coming up in here. Some plants are gonna make it because we are going to be going into winter in a month. And I don't know when we're gonna get cold. Let me keep walking. Because last year we got very cold in the spring. It was, we had one of the hardest springs ever. So I don't know what's gonna be, but you know, it's plants, whatever is, is. I know that my walking onions are gonna do great. The green sorrow does good. How do I use green sorrow? I add that into anything I'm making that can use greens, whether it's stir fry, soup, just a little bit. You know, I try to mix up my greens, so I like my green sorrel. You don't have to maintain it or do anything. And that's, let me swing over here, and that's basically it. Here's the chair. Oh, I wanna set up so, more, so many more chairs around the property. I have got, lettuce growing in there which is just starting the bolt now and of course the swiss chard the green and i did find the grasshopper on here one day so he's done a couple little things on there but all in all i have been picking swiss chard out of here almost every day here's the lettuce that bolted and that's fine i will collect the seed this is my midnight snack which is growing tomatoes i don't know how well that's going to do in the cold weather and it's got to be staked up a little bit better i've got beans growing and then I've got Popolo, which is going to go to seed now because they basically, once the weather gets warm, they think about going to seed and then they're done. But they grow so easy, except they like really warm weather. So if we don't get really warm weather, they won't grow until it gets really warm. And then I've got some walking on onions in there and, of course, the garlic chives. Okay, let's swing around. Let's see. Let's walk over here. Oh, these are done. We've got... Miracle squash, no plant. <laughs> I actually trimmed the plant off and I've got to get the squash off now. The plant is done. There were two squash plants. Keep in mind again, these seeds were grown from pure zucchini that I grew in the yard this year because that's all I grew this year. My neighbors aren't growing anything. And all the seeds that I saved pretty much did different things. So they're only designed when you buy the seeds to probably do zucchini the one time. They're probably hybridized in some way. And that protects the market for them because you can't grow zucchini unless you buy their seeds. But it doesn't matter, don't wanna go there. Um, they taste great. I, you can bake, cook, do anything you want with them. And they've been fantastic. I even grade up a little bit and put it in the dog food now to give them some enzymes and everything that they need and real vitamins. So it works out really good. So I don't care what it looks like. But I do both. I buy seeds and then I, you know, from zucchini, true zucchini. And then I, the first zucchinis, I keep the seeds from if they're big enough. And then I plant them. And that's what I ended up with. I've got peppermint there. And then, of course, this is just the tomato plants. There's another midnight snack back here. Let's see if you can see that through the tool. See, all this. We'll see. Maybe this one will do really, really well. This tomato plant, I will see in the spring if I'm gonna take it out because it's already, it's gonna be two years old. It's from last year and if I leave it, it's all growing off this one stem. So even though it seems to be doing good and it still has tomatoes on it and everything, it's starting to get old. So we'll see. I mean, if it really looks like it's gonna continue on, I will leave it. And, or I could always do cuttings since it does so well. 
I've done quite a few cuttings this year too. All you have to do is cut any of, I could actually cut this whole piece off and then trim most of the leaves off and just root it that way. And I've got different ways of rooting it. I've actually taken, well, it's easier to show you, but I've taken a piece, cut it off, put a flower pot on top in another container. And because it stays damp under the flower pot, the stem, it grows really beautiful. But again, I probably would be better if I showed you. But otherwise, it's still hanging in there and throwing tomatoes. And even though we've had such cold weather and then it warms up, I don't know. I think it's just as confused as me. All right, let's turn around here. This is the stevia, the ginger, which is the skinny leaves. And then, of course, the turmeric and my black turmeric. Um, I'm going to probably fairly soon in the next month or two be harvesting almost all of it. See the leaves are turning brown because the weather is changing. Now, do keep in mind, some people have asked me, you know, they want me to do the harvest, which I will do. I did it last year. You know, when you harvest it, show us so we can eat it. You can eat this all year. And I'm probably going to set up a whole bunch more next year because sometimes I really don't want to cut them out because they look so beautiful. But you can actually pull them out and cut off parts of what you want and replant them back. You don't wait. You, that's called green ginger and that's so healthy. So you can eat it, you know, anytime. And up there, let me swing over here. See the table over there? I'm thinking of covering that whole table with ginger. But then I can change my mind and put carrots there. I want to keep it off the ground so the rabbits and stuff won't get to it. So I'm going to decide, but I think I'm going to get more ginger growing, especially I'm going to have so much. I mean, look how it's taken off the couple little pieces I put in each one. Look how big the stalks are in there. They're huge. So they're doing really good. I'm excited to see on the black turmeric. Let me move this out of the way, the stevia. Okay, it doesn't want to move. Um, I'm quite excited to see what's going to happen with that and how much is really in there since I only had teeny little pieces. I think there were two teeny pieces and that was it. And then I should, on the stevia, I should be collecting seed because look at it. It's just full of seed. Except I usually let it die back on its own, which it does. As soon as the weather changes, you know, it's doing what it's supposed to do. It goes the flower and then it's going to die back. As you can see, it's going to start turning brown and then it won't look like anything. It'll be all gone. And then in the spring, as soon as the weather changes, boom, it just takes off and grows back on its own. Sometimes growing up from seed, you may not get it the same as what you're growing. And that's why you want to taste it before you buy it. I actually did taste it. But you know what? I have grown some on my deck garden by seed and it tastes good. So I might collect some seed if I don't forget. Oh, and there is the tree collar, the purple one. Look how big it's gotten. Still in a pot. This is the only one that made it, but look how beautiful. I wanna get this in the ground and something's been nibbling, but that's okay, it's not gonna hurt it. And that leaf is gorgeous. And I wanna make sure it's well protected. That's very important because it's the only one I've got. And I had another company out here that was gonna get them in. And I just spoke to them and so far they said no, they didn't have enough of their purple tree color to get any together. They were going to root it and sell it. So I may have to depend everything on that one. So we'll see what happens. So that is the table. It's doing great. I'm really happy with it and I want to expand the table. And then if I expand it, I can make it where it's not so um, packed. It's packed so tightly that some of them don't get sun. Also. Oh my gosh, this is a east, east facing wall. I did a video on that. I'm really not good with north, south, east, and west. But the sun rises behind me. So it gets the morning sun, which it's getting now. The sun is just coming through the clouds. And then it does not get the hot afternoon sun for the summer. Now maybe in the winter, it would be better for it to get sun and it would carry on. And that is a possibility. But when it does get the afternoon sun, I've tried it, it fries. It doesn't do well. It likes a lot of sun and shade, like cooler sun, and then it doesn't mind the shade. So you can try it different ways. I mean, technically, if I want, I could try to carry some over in another area where it gets more sunlight and see if some of them continue to grow through the winter. We have also brought them in. I had a ginger growing that was doing really good. And when I went to harvest it, Gary grabbed the pot and all and brought it in the house and it grew all winter in the house. So that's another way of doing it. 
So we'll see what happens in the next month, what we plan on doing, but right now I'll probably harvest some and then let them sit over winter and then replant them in probably middle spring. Okay, let's go through the gates into the main garden. We are now into my main garden. It's not Gary's, this is mine. And my tomato plant that was a volunteer, it's many tomato plants as you can now see, that came up has seen better days. Yet, and that's green sorrow also that something's been nibbling on, but you know, that's okay. And then all the walking onions. Oh, that's another story too. Even though it looks sad and it's, you know, it's me, I got to get out here and really clean it up. And of course you take all these leaves and I compost all the leaves. Don't forget, just throw them in a bucket. And if I'm making another container, I use all this, I put it on the bottom of the container. Remember when I plant, I do it the wrong way. Let's put it that way. I've been told that it won't work. I layer, I absolutely layer everything. I do it the way you were taught not to do it. So I don't know what to tell you, but as this is way I've read, seen, been taught, you never do it that way. So I do things my way. Anyways, I layer. So I will take a container and I will just throw leaves and stuff from the garden. And then I will throw kitchen scraps. And then if I'm really in a hurry to plant, I will throw some potting soil on top. That's it, I'm done. I've composted for the whole year, the whole season, and it works. And that's what happened in here. Now you can see, because the squash has died back, you can see what went on. This is a container that I started to compost in and then everything started to grow. I did have flower pots in there. I was composting, you know, kind of like throwing stuff around. And then all of a sudden the tomatoes took off. You couldn't see in there. I had tomatoes growing in here. I had, uh, what else besides tomatoes? I had squash growing in here. I had cucumbers growing in here. And it was like a jungle. I couldn't even get in here. So everything else has kind of died back, but the tomatoes are doing really good. And yes, I ate about, about 10 tomatoes yesterday alone out of that, and the tomatoes are still going good. I will come out here and groom this. I have to. These probably are hybrids of the brown berries. And that's why they've got that brownish tinge to them because it was a tomato I did buy and then the tomatoes fell and of course whatever it pollinated, cross pollinated with, it grew into this and it's grown beautiful. And because it grew in my yard, my garden, in the conditions it liked, it did wonderful. It did absolutely fantastic. So all this poor plant needs is a really a good grooming and then I can step back and see what happens later and it will look really nice if I groom it and restake it a little bit because it's kind of gone wild. Back here is a collar that came up from seed and it's growing so different that the more I look at it and the more I look at this, which is kale, this is dinosaur kale, somewhere along the line, I believe that collared plant cross pollinated with something because the trunk is absolutely straight. It's growing like a tree collared and it is not a tree collared. My, my tree collared has never throwing flowers and you don't want to grow seeds really from a tree color because you won't get the same effect. You'll get a nice plant but you won't get that tree effect. This one's growing like a tree. Beautiful trunk and I should not make sure I stake that well so it doesn't fall over. And I'm really convinced that it has cross pollinated the seed, the original seed that it grew from, from either one of my kales because look at the trunk or something else on the property but it's doing beautiful. Oh, look at this. I didn't even know this. Look at that. Again, this zucchini that's growing in here has no soil. This is a video I made early in the year. I was going to use this red container to throw kitchen scraps in until I decide where to put them. And the squash grew and it's been growing all summer and now into fall and I've got another zucchini. It came up just from the compost, so really good. As long as it's growing, I'll leave it alone. I'll just trim back some of the leaves. Look at all the tomatoes on that. I just have to restake it. Got tomatoes growing there. So that's the dinosaur kale. I've been trimming a little bit. It's really still struggling, but I really, I really don't want to pull it out. It's like four years old, but is it going to be five soon next year? So we'll see what happens. And then here I've got more dinosaur, you know, this is dinosaur kale and this is cuttings. So I stuck in some pieces in this pot and it took off and grew. So that 
dinosaur kale is not a loss no matter what. You take cuttings and you can grow all kinds of new plants from it. And then you direct the plant in the proper way by staking it so it grows nice and straight and not let it just do its thing where then you think, what in the world is it doing and where is it going? So you can direct the plants where you want. I just forget. Red vein sorrel, all this does need to be cleaned up. So just keep in mind, I'm doing it little by little. I can prove it to you because I have buckets to show you. I have been doing some cleaning. Isn't this beautiful? Look how blue. Every time the weather gets cool, the dinosaur kale loves it and turns so blue. Isn't that gorgeous? This again are, is cuttings. It's actually off the one that should have been staked. Okay, let's not talk about that. It's kind of curled down. Let's see, tomato back here, lemon verbena. Now this dinosaur kale has seen better days. This one might be on its way out and I probably will trim that one out. Oh, that is not good. I didn't even see that. Something chewed the base out of that and that's why that one's not doing good. So I will get that one out. So that dinosaur kale is going. Let me step in here. This is my purple sprouting broccoli that does have a lot of little insect issues. Now, here's the thing. I was gonna go and blast them off with a hose and you do it every day and eventually you get rid of almost all of them. But every afternoon, hundreds of little bush tits come in, including, including the yellow rumped warblers, and they're eating off of that. And I believe that that might be a reason we have hundreds this year of yellow rumped warblers, where last year I just saw the occasional one go through. In fact, I did a video and I didn't even notice till after I looked at the video. Sorry about that. I had to shut off my camera and run inside. I heard Gary calling. Yes, he's got a special ring. So I know when it's him. And he actually called to tell me they did get in some purple tree collared. He stopped over at CPG. They had him, so he's grabbing a tray full. I told him to grab two, but he said he's looking at him, but he's going for the ones that have the best, best root system on them. So he's gonna pick up a tray of those, and I guess we'll, we will be growing more purple tree collared. So I'm excited about that, because when I called them, they told me they didn't think they were gonna have any this year. And he walked in there, he said, he's, they've got a lot of green tree colors right now, but they only have um, some trays of the purple. So he's picking out some and we'll keep some and then my daughter will end up getting some. Ooh, maybe for the holidays. But anyway, so I decided to leave the insects. As I was saying, we have had hundreds of warblers and there was even this little yellow bird, which I believe is called a yellow, an orange crowned, you, it's probably got a dot because you can't see the orange. Even on the photographs I looked online, you can't see the orange, but I recognized it because it had like a white, a light eyebrow and I had not noticed it before. And I didn't even know it was there until I was looking at the video. I was looking for a different bird that I thought I hadn't seen. So I don't know about that, but then I was on the phone with Gary just now and I saw there was like, they kept coming in. It's like a freeway on top of that water fountain I built, the solar. And isn't that something? It's cloudy and the solars are all running. But it, it was like a freeway of uh, yellow rumped warblers coming in along with goldfinches. And there was uh, another little bird, I'm not sure. It might have been a, um, I think it's called a black and white gray sparrow. And I'm not sure. It looked like that one came in. But there was all kinds of birds coming in. They just kept coming in. Well, I was on the phone for a few minutes with Gary. So they just love coming in here because they're staying around and they're picking all the insects off. So since I'm not worried about my plants, I can hose off a lot. All you have to do is spray it off with a hose. And then if they come back, the rest of them will be picked off by the birds. Now, yes, some people don't want insects. And if you're selling your food, you own a farmer's market, of course you want to keep them as clean as possible. I almost got hit by a hummingbird. I like it when nature can all come in here. I mean, look at all this. There is so, and this is a lot of greens and there's more greens than Gary and I will ever need. On top of that, it's, I shouldn't say need because it all goes back and it feeds the soil. So if birds can come in, why not? Um, 10 years ago, I never even saw a yellow rumped warbler here wouldn't even know what they were and never saw them. So we're bringing in a lot of birds now that 
are obviously in the area, but now they're finding food here and of course water. So we've got more birds here than I even know what they are and I'm still trying to learn all the different birds. Swinging around over here quickly, I still have a tomato plant growing and then this is celery that went to seed. There's another tomato, some cell, more celery, and those are more cuttings off the dinosaur kale. Just kind of stuck in a whole bunch of little pieces and it's growing so we'll see what I'm going to do with that. I am going to straighten up my yard a little bit. I think I want it to look nicer especially for spring. So during the holidays I'm not going to worry about it but I am going to be doing stuff you know cleaning little by little. This is probably seed from lemon verbena but I'm going to when I need it I'm just going to do it by cutting and this is a big lemon verbena. Notice it's turning yellow. I think it's coming to the end because it goes dormant See how the leaves are starting to go yellow and brown? It does go dormant for the winter. That's how I started. I went to the nursery. They had a whole bunch that were dormant and they sold them to me for half price and that's why I've got more than I need. Gary's got it growing in his garden and I've got one here. And then if I swing you over here, I've got one there. I've got another one way back there. And there's another one somewhere else. I can't remember. I, maybe it's Gary's garden. I am thinking. No, there's another one over there. So I've got two here, one there, one there, one here, and then one way down there. So I don't even need any more lemon verbena. I make tea out of it, and I just love it. I mix that in with the spearmint mint that I grow. So that's basically it. I'm probably swinging you too much. Let me move very slowly. See, lemon verbena everywhere. It grows like a big bush. And I've got all mine, I believe, in pots. There's one in the ground. And you know what? The ones in pots are bigger than the one in the ground because this one is in a pot. It's in the container. See down here? And look how massive this thing is. And I'll show you when we get to the other side, you know, what's going on. And even the one in the ground is nowhere near as big. That's a mushroom plant. Grew a little slow this year. Maybe because we had such a cold winter and it's already dying back a little bit. So we'll see. Look at this dazzling blue kale. Cuttings. All cuttings. See? All cuttings. That's doing really good. All right, let's continue. Oh, this is what I was going to say. See? You walk over here. I am cleaning up the garden. And this is gold. There's more over there. That is all gold. You don't want to throw any of that away. So I'm collecting it and doing that. And then, of course, I'm trying to go through and see. Uh-oh. See? Stuff like that's going to die. I'm going to sit this on the table and then get that planted. I probably have hundreds of walking onions, little ones that fell, and I'm trying to collect them because I've got another way of growing it where it's just so easy, it's impossible to just leave them. And I just do it in my two system pot that I do, and they're growing like mad. So I'm going to see how many I can collect and keep going. But I usually forget about them and don't bother because there's so much work to collect and then try to figure out where I'm going to plant them. So this time I am going to be collecting them all. Again, more tomato plants that came up as volunteers and we still have tomatoes back there. And it's doing really good. So we'll see. It needs a little grooming and cleaning. Yes, this conglomerate mess here with all my solar panels and stuff here is Kind of, I, because I can see it from inside the house, and that's why I like it here facing the garden. And I can see what fountains I want to keep, what I want to change. I don't know what's going to be with this, but this is funny. I had a rock sitting on top here, like that, no splash. Now that I moved the rock off, the bees left. Maybe they don't like the splash. I know that they don't like anything that's got water touching them, they want it where it's dry. So I'm not sure if it's just they decided not to collect any more water or they don't like the splash. I have no idea. So I would have to wait and see if they come back. And here's one. But see, he's not staying. So I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyways, let's keep going. Uh, more mint. Let's see. That's all spearmint on the ground. And that grows everywhere. See? It's all growing through the garden. It's all going to die back, and then I can trim it back the way I want in the spring. But that's all spearmint, and then this is all, this is collard. A lot of this is hybrids, too. That's why the leaf, it's like, why isn't it round like a regular collard? Probably hybrids from my sprouting broccoli, which is growing right here, Kitty's favorite. Another fountain, but see, I've got to wipe the panel with my hand, and it's too far up. Don't make it so tall. You don't need solar fountains panels that tall. Now, if you 
wanted to put them on a uh, battery pack, you can put the battery pack and hide it. You won't have any sticks at all sitting around the yard. So either one of them work really good. That's another video. Don't want to get sidetracked. All right, let's see. Let's swing back. Oh, well, let's show you Kitty's garden really quick. Do not tell Kitty that I've been taking from her garden. This is Kitty's garden and friends and family. But the lettuce has been wonderful. Look at this. A lot of these came up from seeds. Some of them are cuttings. I've been taking lettuce. This is all beautiful lettuce through here. And then I've got some Swiss chard now. And I believe this is sprouting broccoli growing in here. So she's got a lot of stuff growing in here. She does get, she loves the new little leaves. That's what she likes. The really new little leaves. Oh, I think, oh, and there's parsley growing in there too. So I've got to get more things growing for them. I know her favorite is the sprouting broccoli, the little tiny broccoli heads, but she will eat any of this. But I've been taking lettuce out for myself. Just don't tell her, I won't tell her. Anyways, her little garden, let me step back so you can see it, is on a chair and it's watering the pot underneath that I've got a cutting for a tree collar there. So it's double duty. Keep in mind, anywhere you have a flower pot sitting, all the soil around the fat flower pot, if you've got it on dirt, I'm gonna say dirt. Dirt is something that plants will not grow in. Soil is something that plants grow in. Nothing wants to grow in this dirt. This is clay. Can't get anything to grow unless you change it. That will all change. The matter around the flower pots improves that dirt into soil and it, you can start growing in it just right there next to it. So keep that in mind, especially if you need to collect some soil. You can sometimes go to flower pots that are on the ground and collect soil right next to it. Let's see, the pepinos, we pulled all the pepinos off and I want to get some cuttings off of that. Gary took some off of my plant here and he's got a whole bunch more growing in his garden. So he said they root really easy, even easier than tomatoes. He had like 100% root success on that. So that was really good. Aren't these beautiful? And they just keep growing and growing, the sprouting broccoli. Had those for years. I've got to get more growing. And uh, bought the seeds on eBay and the guy's not there anymore. Ah, uh, let's see. That is the curry plant. It really took over that container, didn't it? Pushed the tomatoes over. And then I've got some color that came up from seed in there. So it's kind of pushed everything over, but it's doing really good. And yet I have never cooked with it. I like it though. It smells good if you like curry. Let's see what else is there. And then I've got oregano on the ground. Again, walking onions all through here. I don't know if this is going to look better or worse in the next couple weeks. If our weather turns, then a lot of the garden may die back in the cold weather. Peppers don't like the cold weather. Mint doesn't like the cold weather. There's a lot of things that don't. Tomatoes generally do not like the cold weather, but it will depend on the tomato plant growing in your yard. So they're all different. Here, let me swing you slowly, is another container. And I will not plant anything right now in here until I'm ready. I will probably get the old radish that's growing in there and compost that. And then there's walking onions. And then here is another tomato plant, which is still doing good up against the wall. That's a microclimate. When it's up against the wall like that, it's getting warmth from the wall. This wall in the evening, when it's cold outside and you touch this wall, it's, it's warm right now. It is very warm. And plants that like warmth do really well next to a wall. Sweet potato, I need to take that out this year when it dies back and see what's in there. I didn't last year because I want to maybe move things around. I want to get different potatoes growing. Let's see, and then of course here, I've got some celery. If you cut the top stalk off, as soon as it's done doing its seeds, if you want to leave it, it will continue to grow. See, it's come back. This is all coming back, and it's red celery. See the red celery? It's coming back from this one. It will regrow. So I really should cut that out so it grows better. Oh, look at this. You've got to see this. This is right in front of me. I want to share this with you. I did a whole video on these guys, how they love balls. And I'm going to do a video on how we're going to make DIY water fountains for hummingbirds. Because though hummingbirds love water fountains, there are certain ones they love even more. And that is one of them. Look at that, right in front of me. He doesn't care. I hear another bird. Oh, wow. Look 
Okay, I am so sorry. I'm going to drag this out. I should cut this all out. Every time I hear birds, I stop. I think that was a wren, though. It's amazing. These teeny little wrens sound like they're big birds. <laughs> they really do. You look for them and look at them, they got this big voice. And then you look in there and there they are, that big. <laughs> All right, then you've got some of the water fountains going. See on these? I don't know, this one might need to be flushed. But sometimes it's just as simple as wiping the top really good and making sure it's getting good sunlight. But it probably needs a little hosing. What I usually do is just hit the center with a hose and then it cleans it out. Might have some algae or something in it. That's what you see in a lot of my water fountains. This is just green algae growing, which is fine. That doesn't hurt the animals. It's natural. You'll find it in lakes and rivers and stuff. But you can scrub it out. You can take a, um, oh, you could take a little bit of bleach and water if you wanted to. Very small amount of bleach. Or just take a, they're not stainless steel. They're aluminum pads you can get now at the store. They're like a stainless steel scrubber. But you can get the ones that are made out of aluminum. Scrub them real good and rinse them and you can get rid of all that. That's the other one running. I love that one. Yet the birds rarely bathe in it. At least I haven't seen them. And watch, they'll all come down and make a liar out of me. That's usually what happens. I see something and then they all come in. That is a tree collar that fell over. See, because I never staked it. You see that one. But then behind there is just collared. And then red, red vein sorrel. And look at all the baby collared and different things growing in there. I've got to get them out. Put them in pots and move them where I want. Otherwise, they'll choke themselves out and they'll only get a few. And there's a whole bunch in there. That is dazzling blue kale. And again, I should have staked it better. And it kind of fell over. And it's still growing, though. The main thing is you can go get the nicest leaves and eat them and leave the rest for the birds. So it's still doing really, really well. And of course, there's eggplant. I've got some small eggplant on there. And then this one's flowering over here. And so this one's burping, see, because we have no sun. And that's the other reason the other one may not have been running. We've just got a teeny bit of sun coming through the clouds, but it's still cloudy, and they don't know if it's going to get sunny or not today. More sweet potato growing here, and oh, wow! I saw this two days ago. I didn't look at it yesterday. I came through here real quick. And this is a bean. It was really short. It just took off i got to get more beans growing. Anyways, that's sweet potato. I didn't plant that. It came up on my compost, and I bet you there's good sweet potatoes under there, there. I really should get the sweet potatoes out and get some squash this year in here. And then I've got strawberry mint. We've talked about it. it smells good. Don't make mint tea out of it. it. tastes terrible. Garlic chives. This is so old. This is... This is Swiss chard that's been in here for quite a few years now. It's just big and really doing nothing. and just feels so bad to kill it since it really loves just growing in there. So I've been using it as a nursery for walking onions. Every time I find a little walking onion, I stick it in. And so it kind of leave it, but it really, really should be pulled out. And then of course the celery that's gone to seed, that really should be pulled out. So, and there's some sage down there. So it's, I still have a lot of cleaning to do, but you know, all in all, I think it's doing pretty good for the, you know, the weather we're in right now. And I've got plenty of food. We, if something happened and I couldn't get to a grocery store, let's say, God forbid, there was an earthquake, the stores were shut down, we would be fine. We have all the food we want. So we would be perfectly fine. And let's see. There is another tree colored. You've seen it. This is the one that's just getting bigger and bigger. And apparently now we're going to get a whole bunch more. And we're going to get purple ones, which is really cool. Oh, look more. Oh, my goodness. I did trim this up the other day. And just by trimming it up, look at all the little squash that are growing on here. That's all it takes. There's another one. Sometimes you just clean up the plant. And then I threw, see what I did? I've got my bucket in there. And I'm throwing all the leaves in there. It's decaying and it's feeding the plant. It's making a comeback. I thought that plant was on the way out. I guess it's not. I have not trimmed this yet. I did not stake it. This is a purple sprouting broccoli mixed in with a dazzling blue kale. And I am working on it. I've been cutting things out of here and figuring out if I want to, you know, root some of it. This one's going to stay. See how nice and straight the trunk is? It goes all the way up and it's nice and straight. I'm going to keep that and clean it up. But uh, as far as the rest, I think it's really, it's in my way when I'm walking. And the reason a lot of things get insects like that, see all the insects on the top? It's 
because it's not doing well. It's basically Mother Nature coming in and saying, this plant is at the end of its life. And when it's at the end of its life, Mother Nature comes in and says, let's get rid of it. This, and we'll feed the birds. So it's doing, it's not just dying, it's, it's feeding all the birds. So it's kind of a double duty. When plants are healthy, they generally don't even get insects. When they are being fed and you can rot your own leaves and feed your plants without even buying food if you don't want to, they do really good. Look how good that one's doing and that one doesn't have an insect on it. Look at it. Look at the leaves on it. I'm hoping you can see that. The leaves are just beautiful because it's a beautiful, healthy plant that is in a pot. That's a tree color that left the pot and it's just growing and growing. So when plants are really healthy and they can survive for many years, generally they do really, really well. But this one, you know, it's, it's in here. It needs some more compost added in. It kind of grew too many stalks, see? On one branch, and yet this one's doing good. But the other one, see, here, let me show you. See this? This has got four stalks on one branch. These, this one's doing okay, but this one's not, this one's not, and this one's not. So if I trim out the other ones that are not doing that good, and they're curled and not straight, I know that this straight one will probably take off and be a beautiful tree. So we'll see, I'll kind of see as the, you know, time goes on the next month or so what I'm gonna do, and I'll take it from there. We are introducing this, as I've talked about, for the birds. This is because it's out in the open like this, and it's gonna be winter coming. We wanna make sure the top is covered so the birds can still come in and get seed. On top of that, if they're feeding in here, in this type of dog crate I set up, and I have talked about this, a hawk cannot swoop in and get them while they're feeding. A hawk cannot get through this. They wouldn't even want to try because they could hurt themselves. So this should work out really good in the winter when the birds are a little slower because of the rain. They'll be able to come in here, feed, and then go straight back into the trees that are all around here. And they use the tree colored as a tree to perch in. So everything is important to them, and that is important to them. So that's what we're doing. We're kind of getting them used to it. And it, and it should work out really good because they've been really hanging out in there. Okay, and then of course, well you've seen all this, and then my papayas, they're doing really good. The moringa is starting to lose its leaves because the weather is cooling, but still doing good. Look at all the pods. We're gonna have tons more seeds and we still have so many seeds from last year. And then of course the strawberries are actually still doing good and the tomato plant that I did plant here, which was a volunteer and I brought over here, it's doing good against the fence. So we'll see what happens. And then my nursery for my walking onions. Look at all that. Those are baby walking onions. And then in there too, I haven't done anything in the middle. Whoops, I think I hit my mic. Sorry. I haven't done anything in the middle. No, but I'll probably put something in there later as the year goes on. And then here, let's see, more tomatoes growing here, doing really good up against the wall. May stay nice and warm for the winter and continue to grow really good. That's just a purple curly kale that's too big and needs to be groomed and this all needs to be done. You know what, let's go into the room where Gary's been working and see what's going on in there. Gary has put a screen door on now and he's still working in here and he built the door so the birds can't get into the house if he wants to leave it open. He did a whole video on this chair that he made that he can move this around. You can move this around with one finger and that you can turn it towards the sun, you can wheel it and everything. And he was all excited and he had a watermelon on there. He dragged this out. So he was grooming, cleaning and taking care of the watermelon. I don't know what he was trimming out, but he came in to tell me he was so upset. He cut through the vine and he accidentally cut off his watermelon. <laughs> He brought it in so sad. And I said, well, come on, it's just a plant. And to be honest, watermelon is probably not something you want to grow indoors for the winter. Grow tomatoes indoors. Look at the beautiful tomatoes. I mean, these are just gorgeous and they'll do really good. Look, more are growing since he brought them in. So he's got tomatoes growing and he even brought in a little spider. Oh, there it is, a little orb spider. Not real thrilled about having a spider in the house, but if he stays here, okay. So anyways, 
he brought in an orb spider with it. But the tomatoes will do really good in here, probably all winter. That's something I can see growing. There's a lot of plants you can grow for the winter indoors as house plants and use them as food. These are as trees he's growing. I don't even know what they all are. Let's see, what else is there? But anyways, that's what's going on in here. And he's slowly working on it. And I guess he's getting there, but there's his watermelon. Oh, well, I see he brought something else in. Oh, sweet potatoes probably from his garden and what he's done is just brought them in here and you let them sit and then the sugars make them sweeter because I made some and they were really good so he must have dug those up and brought them in here but that's what's going on in here he's going to mount the mirrors and then he'll talk more about it he ran a track so he could put lights up here I'm not even sure where it's plugged into oh it's plugged in over here that's right he has an outlet here and then he can turn on whatever lights he wants in here if he wants to turn on lights with the mirrors they're going to get more light than they need because it's going to come through the window and bounce mirrors create light and white walls create light you want to lighten up a room you paint it white you want to add in more light oh my goodness <laughs> you want to add in more light then you put on mirrors i did that years and years ago I, my first house had this tiny little dark dining room and what did I do? I walled the mirror first with wallpaper and it wasn't that light, it was so dark. And then I turned around and I mirrored the whole wall and lightened up the whole room. It was beautiful. Now let's go out into this garden. This is the end of it for now. I think I've dragged this on way too long. Citrus tree is doing good. We get a lot of oranges and different fruits. He brought in a ton of lemons and I am now freezing my lemons so I will have lemon any type of lemon I want, you know, juice or whatever I want to use it for all winter. The papayas are doing fantastic. Look at that. They just keep growing and growing and growing. I cannot believe it. It's unbelievable. I would never believe six years ago if somebody would have said five, six years ago, oh, you're going to grow papayas. I would have thought, yeah, right. This is unreal. And these, uh, you know the story. I don't have to get into it. They came out of my yard from a compost container because Gary had eaten some papayas and I compost in place and they grew and then I dragged them out and left them in pots here and they grew and that's how we're getting them. This, this one I put out early in the year and it is already flowering. Look at that. And I left it in the pot with the second one. This is amazing. And this I grew from seed. I think two years ago. Look at that. I have pomegranates. I grew this from seed. I ate a pomegranate. I didn't compost the seeds. I threw them on the deck. I did compost the seeds too and they were coming up. And they started to grow and I planted it. And I hope I don't regret it because that thing is massive. It, it's grown in about two years so big but it's full of pomegranates and this year last year I had some pomegranates on it, it was a tiny little tree but I think the squirrels took them this year they didn't and I don't know why got more growing those are just orange trees that came up in my compost I stuck here and then here's the other papayas and I'm gonna get something growing later on in the year there not right now so that's the story on what's growing here now let's swing around and walk over to the wall which is really does not have too much going on. I'm composting right now in the bathtub. So all the leaves I'm starting to take off of the squash, I am putting in the bathtub and then I will cover it with maybe some wood chips or potting soil or whatever I want. Here is another squash that came up. That's a different one. Look at that. I call them white. Look at that. Came up from my squash that I grew that was a zucchini in the beginning of the year kept the seeds threw them out here and they all grew different things tomato plants really kind of done so I'm going to decide if I'm going to clean it up and let it grow you know next year or not but we'll see later it did really well it grew all over and this is just some red swiss chard like I said I'm not really doing anything but look at all the seeds tons of seeds and each of these pots are full of seeds so one pod has a whole bunch of seeds so that's why you could grow one you could drop one in a pot and think why in the world do I have so many because there's a whole bunch of tiny seeds in there that's the way they grow they probably know by nature a lot of the little ones probably get eaten by insects and you know things and so birds and so they grow a whole bunch and then the strongest survive picked all my yellow eggplant and I'm going to compost it 
This is chocolate mint. It was on my deck. I'm going to see if it will grow in the winter up against the wall. So we'll see. That's an experiment. That's eggplant. And this is just some sow thistle in there. Oh yeah, look at that. And then the rest is green, Swiss chard, and the one that's kind of a green and red, kind of a green with a red vein. Yes, there is squash all over here. Yes, a month ago we did a garden tour that was a harvest and it's full. I can't even believe I start looking and looking and there's more and more everywhere I look and I've got so much in the house, I'm trying to go through it. I, oh my gosh, I knew there was one in here yesterday. I didn't realize there were two. Look at that, they're like watermelons and they're round. Oh my gosh. You know, I came through here in the evening. It was dark and I was kind of trimming some of the leaves off and because I want to compost it. This one I knew was here, look at that. Oh my gosh. The pepper I think here got sunburn, but I'm gonna leave it here and see what happens because I'm hoping it will do okay up against the warm wall. It must be because it's flowering again. Peppers do like a lot of heat, so we'll see what happens now. I don't know what's going to happen in here. I composted these seeds and they started coming up. And what I may do is thin out a bunch of them as it grows and let the strongest survive and see if I can get some sort of squash to grow up against the wall. It's right up against the wall. And of course, these are still growing. Again, microclimate because it's warm up against the wall. Look at that. Beautiful flowers and yes, more squash. I can't remember if there's any squash here or not. They're pro oh yes, look at that. I did not see that yesterday, so that's fairly new. Oh, look at that, funny looking little squash. So we do have squash growing here. I do plan next year, in the spring I have more tubs, and I'm going to run more tubs all the way along against the wall. Might as well, I have a hose that I can bring over here and water. I enjoy coming out and watering. And when it's in a container, you don't have to soak it. You just kind of run through with water. It doesn't need it. To, oh, I didn't see that one. <laughs> I didn't see that one. I didn't look down. I don't look down in life. I look up. Look at that. So there is another one there. Oh my goodness. Anyways, I'm going to cover the wall with containers and keep going. I don't want to do too much because when we have birthday parties and stuff here, they come and they drive here. So I'm not ready to block it out. Maybe when the grandkids are all big enough and nobody's having any parties here, maybe I'll make this into an orchard or something later on. I don't know. Time will tell. And then we've got the avocado tree that came up in the wood chips on its own because they did bring wood chips once from avocados and that one found its way up and Gary's going to keep that covered and protect it. This is amazing. These two apple trees I stuck in the ground without no effort. Those flower pots, those are floral pots that I use, have no bottoms. So I cut the bottoms out, but I want to make sure that the roots get water. So I planted them in the flower pots with no bottom. So eventually, if they should live, those pots will split and be able to come right out. These were grown on my deck by seeds. I just threw the seeds in there and they grew. I have no idea what's going to be, but Gary, when he dragged it out here, said they're not going to grow here. And they're growing. I cannot believe this one is three and a half feet tall. This one's three feet tall. Look how big they are. Now, whether they're going to make it or not, I don't know. What they're going to taste like from a seed, I don't know. But if they do survive and they do make it, we can always graft onto it later and learn how to graft and get it going. So I stuck them out here because I didn't have the heart to compost them. Now that this worked, I've got more. <laughs> so I'm going to get some more out here. But they've been out here for a while. You saw them on my last, I think, two garden tours already. They seem to be doing really good. But I really like using a pot like that because I know for a fact an absolute fact, I know that they're going to get water. Because when I water, it has to go straight down. But if you water the ground, let's say I was watering something right here, you may water straight down and then it may find a trail, not saying a gopher hole, but it could be even an insect's underground and the water could leave. You water and water, you think it's feeding or watering that plant you've got there. A pretend plant, there's no plant. But the water may be leaving and not going to the roots. With this, it has to go to the roots because it is planted in that pot. It's just that there's no bottom. So afterwards, the water can go anywhere it wants. But here's the thing. 
if the plant survives right now in its young stage, and if the water is leaving for some reason after it goes to the bottom of the pot and then takes off, the roots will follow because it's setting root. So they'll follow the water. And that's about it. Oh, look, Gary's aloe vera has gone to flower he planted over there. Yellow, let's see if we can zoom in. Isn't that beautiful? He planted that. And then the truck bed with the avocado roots still trying to grow. That really looks odd coming up from the roots, doesn't it? I love the green Swiss chard. That is, I like spinach. I always, even as a kid, like spinach. So I really like the green Swiss chard. So right now, even though Gary wants to prep it and do something with it, I think we're going to leave the truck bed just the way it is for the winter. We'll see what happens and what we're going to do later. There's other ways I could do it too. I could always put containers on top, leave the Swiss chard, compost and place in containers in the truck bed, and the Swiss chard can do its thing and then new plants can grow out of the containers, big containers. So there's a lot of different ways you can do things and I can put even more pots if I wanted to along the edge here. So we'll see how it goes and what we plan on doing. The main thing is I have a water source. And as long as I have a water source and I don't have to go far, it's just a matter of turning on the water and watering this. So I'll see in the spring what we want to do. A few years ago, we did spaghetti squash. We had so much, we actually got sick of it. I don't find spaghetti squash as versatile as zucchini. I happen to prefer zucchini over any squash you can grow. And the reason is you can, I, I don't want to say you, because I don't know what you do with squash. I can do a lot with a zucchini. I can use that as a filler for meat dishes. I can use that as flour. It acts as a flour in cakes and breads. I can use zucchini because zucchini doesn't have a taste. It will taste like what you ever you flavor it with. You're baking a cake and you add in zucchini, it's going to take on the cake. You won't know it's there. All you know is it's moist and it tastes so good. If you're making a meat or vegetable dish and you add in zucchini, you're not even going to know it's there. It's just going to be in there as a filler and take on the other flavors if you add in spices or, and different other things in there that you like. If you add meat in, let's say you are a meat eater, whether you're using, let's say, chicken or beef, it will take on the flavor. It's kind of like soy that people years ago when I was a kid started using soy that way. It will take on whatever flavor you are adding to it. It can go sweet or it can go salty, whatever you want. That's why I love zucchini. I can do so much with it. As a kid, my mother used to make tuna patties. So she would just mix tuna with some flour and some eggs and then fry them on the stove with a little oil. Well, I can do the same thing, but let's say tuna is expensive. I can grate up some zucchini, put zucchini in there with the tuna, and the tuna is still gonna taste like tuna. You're not gonna taste the zucchini and you can make double tuna patties to eat just the way they are or add into a sandwich. I'm using that as an example. That's why I love zucchini or just cut it up, put it in a frying pan with a little butter or oil, fry it up. It lightly browns, a little salt and pepper, and it's fabulous. And boy, do my dogs love that too. So there's so much you can do with zucchini. Um, any of the squash that's like zucchini. It doesn't have to be zucchini. There's a Mexican squash, I think. There's another one called gray squash. There's different names for it. That whole group, you can do anything you want with it. And that's why I happen to like that more than anything. When you have pumpkin, let's say you've got a pumpkin type squash and it's got a very type of pumpkin-y taste. At that point, I don't want to add pumpkin into my meat dish. It may be fine for a cake, but it's not, it may not taste that good in a meat dish or a dish that you just don't want it to taste like pumpkin. That's why I like my zucchini. That's why you always hear me talking about zucchini. Somebody, oh, I don't have his name, wrote to me, I almost unsubscribe to you because you grow zucchini and love zucchini and I hate it. Well, let me tell you something. When I was a little girl, my mother used to cook zucchini. I don't want to use this word, but I will. I hated it. I dreaded it. Thank goodness she never forced me to eat it as long as they ate the other vegetables. I could not stand it. It was the way it was cooked. I don't know if it was a European way. I don't know what, it, no matter who cooked it, whether it was my mother or somebody else, I could not stand zucchini. I'd see it and I want to go running. 
I don't know if it's because they cooked it in the tomato sauce or what they did to it, but I couldn't stand it. Then many years later, I got a zucchini and I decided to try it a different way. And what I did was slice it thin, put it on a frying pan with butter, a little salt and pepper, and I fell in love with zucchini. So to that person that said he only un almost unsubscribed to me because he hates zucchini so much, I bet you you haven't made it the way I make it. And the cakes that I make are so good, you have no idea. I have made party meals here loaded with zucchini and nobody knows it's in there. And think of it, it's healthy. It's absolutely healthy. So I think you just need to try things out of the box. Don't go by the recipes you may have. Try something else and you would be surprised how good zucchini can really be. So I think with that, I'm gonna end it here. I've already made this way too long. Isn't this beautiful? This is the red Swiss chard, just gorgeous. And I've been doing along with that. And this is another thing. Some red Swiss chard, some grated up zucchini, uh, you know, and some eggs. You make a, a, like a flour out of it. You, you're making a, it in a bowl and you put it on a frying pan, little spoons at a time, and you flip them. You get the greatest, greatest patties out of that. Gary loves it. And you can store those things in the refrigerator or freezer and have them when you want them. So with that, have a wonderful day. Gary's bees are doing okay. They're down there and they're doing fine. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.